We're starting with the Jumbies, which takes place in Trinidad. Jumbies, J-U-M-B-I-E-S, are malevolent spirits of the forests, kind of like poltergeists. They're mischief makers, they're not to be trusted, and they're not to be messed with. Corrine, a girl whose home is invaded by a Jumbi. The Jumbi wants her father and her. The Jumbies were here long before the humans. The humans came on their boats made of murdered trees, and they cut down the forests, and they shunned the Jumbies, and they relegated them to the deep pockets of the forests of the island, and the Jumbies are not happy, and they want their island back. You say it like that, I'm trying to sympathize the Jumbies. Yeah, huh? They start to sound kind of sympathetic. This was their home first, wasn't it? It reminds me of the um, um, Native American. To the Jumbies, it's... You came to our territory and you call us monsters? They are predators that were there first. They're gonna eat you because you're crunchy and taste good with ketchup, but they were there first. Corinne Lamer's heart beat like wild drums as she ran through the forest. Her bare feet stumbled over the dead leaves and protruding roots of the forest floor. She strained her eyes in the dappled sunlight to keep track of a small, furry agouti that scampered away from her. The animal ran beneath a bush, and Corrine squeezed down to the damp earth to crawl after it. I'm not going to hurt you, she said in her calmest voice. She eased closer. I just need that ting on your leg. She moved with care towards the gooty and gently untied the silk cord. Corrine closed her fist firmly around the stone pendant and crawled back out of the bush. She rubbed the stone with her thumb. Over years of constant handling, she had worn a smooth groove that fit her finger perfectly. The pendant had been her mama's. Then, behind her, the bushes rustled. She turned just in time to see something move in the shadows. A large, yellow eyes blinked. Corrine turned and ran as fast as she could. The thing snarled and rushed after her. He burst through the last line of trees onto the dirt road. A large pair of hands grabbed her. Corrine squeezed her eyes shut. What are you running from, Corrine? A familiar voice asked. She opened her eyes, relieved. Nothing, Papa, she said. Her breath came in fast sips and her body shook. Pierre Lemaire looked into her eyes. Why were you in there? Those filthy boys tied Mama's necklace to a baby Gucci and scared it into the forest. I had to get it back, didn't I? <laughs> I've raised a hunter. He kissed both her cheeks, but then his face grew serious. You should be old enough to know not to go running in the woods. There are wild animals in the bush, Corrine. The sun is going down. It's time to go visit your mama. Are you ready? Corrine and her father walked away. They did not see the pair of yellow eyes that brought a dim light to the edge of the forest. And once the sun descended beneath the tops of the trees, and the forest shadows lengthened along the road, the Jumbi emerged. They go, and they visit the grave of Corrine's mama, Nicole. Here sees a woman he's never seen before. This beautiful woman in a this beautiful woman looking kind of says, "Like, are you lost? Can I help you?" And she doesn't say anything. She just shakes her head and walks away. As the voices of the people faded in the distance, the Jumbi moved out of the protection of the shadows. Her eyes reflected the light back as though they were candles themselves. The air rustled against her body. The rustling stopped as she came to the grave by the orange sapling tree. She smelled the scent of the man who had stopped talking. Pierre, they had called him. She was drawn to something in the scent. She had recognized some of that scent on the child earlier. You never came back. Did you give up your sissy for that child? She looks like she has lived for as long as you have been gone. Did they kill you? Or did you die from being separated from us? One is lost, but one is found. A family broken, now made sound. A new one found is probably about the main character. <gasps> Corrine is of Jumbie blood. She'll replace her. She's a half human, half Jumbie. Right. Right.
Muddy tears flowed down the drumbeat's hollow cheeks. As they touched the ground, they turned into centipedes. When she stopped crying, she rose to her feet and said, Hush, hush now, sister. We will see if we can be a family again. If her sister's a drumbeat, then she's probably mad at her sister for leaving her because she literally said, Why did you leave me? Sort of. And, like, she had no idea what happened to her, so she may take it out on her husband's job. Would that mean that the, that the mom, she just didn't like being a zombie in addition to, like, wanting to be with a human? Nicole left for love. Though it might also have to do if she wasn't happy being a zombie. Ju- a Jumbies, no matter how dark they are, are capable of love. <laughs> that is very important to remember. If the Jumbie kills her father, that might turn her a little bit meanish, and she might turn into a Jumbie form out of rage. So you just figure out that your aunt just killed your father. (laughs) Is the first thing you would think of, I'm going to go with her and help her kill a lot of other people to get her way. What if she makes it look like an accident and manipulates her goes, Oh, come to auntie, you poor orphan thing. The scent of oranges filled the house as Corrine was gently shaken awake by her papa. To dears to day, he said to her sleepy face, your oranges are ready for market. Corrine and Pierre had the best soil on the island. It was why Corrine's mom and Nicole had chosen that spot near the forest for their home. She probably still has some kind of connection with the forest mm-hmm. where she lived. She wants to be near her home and her element. And maybe that's why she has the best soil. You are growing up. Your oranges will help you to make your own way, and then you won't need your old papa anymore. Watch your purse in the market, he said. Watch the sea doesn't swallow you up. I have seawater in my veins. Corrine's papa had taught her everything he knew about the sea, but she was not going to be a fisherman. Corrine breathed in the scent of her oranges. She was like her mama. She belonged to the land. Corrine got dressed in some of her father's old clothes. Satisfied that she looked very businesslike, Corrine went out to pick the best <coughs> oranges to sell. Do people discriminate against her because she's like a tomboy? It doesn't seem to really hinder her at all. Now, it said she was wearing a skirt when she chased the agouti. She's just putting on dad's clothes for the marketplace because she wants to look all like, don't mess with me. I wear, pa- I wear the pants. I wear all the pants. Give me a fair price for my oranges. So, she's just trying to look, you know, tough and, and not to be messed with and not like a little child. In fact, even her father has pointed out, you will not have to be dependent because of the garden. You will be able, if need be, to take care of yourself and your family if someone does not do it for you. The market bustled with people haggling about money and the quality of produce. Coins dropped into hands and jingled in pouches. Vendors sang about their wares over the steady hum of negotiations. A hush began at one side of the square and rippled out to every corner. A beautiful woman moved past market goers in the suddenly still crowd. She was dressed in a green cloth, the color of forest leaves. Corrine pushed her elbows to get a better look. The woman in green finally stopped far from Corrine in front of an ancient woman with striking white hair who sat beneath the only tree in the market. She had come to see the witch. I need something from you, old woman, the jumbie said in a low voice. The witch snorted. The short white braids on her head twitched. You took what you wanted from my hut last night, so what else you need from me? You did not have enough. I planned on a long visit. That made the witch look up. I can't help you, the white witch said. I can't help one side at the expense of the other. You did it before, the chumbi reminded her. The white witch shook her head, her braids tossed in every direction. That was different. That was for the benefit of both sides. I can't intervene like this. You will help me, old woman. The witch bared the few yellow teeth she had left in her mouth. Go back to the hole you came from. Wait there and see if I will ever help you. The jumbie turned to leave, but 
but tossed one last thread over her shoulder. You will help me, or you will suffer. It's good, it's creepy, there are jumpy battles in it.